Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Debbie. Debbie reached out to us for help after meeting two men that she found out were scammers. She tells a story of how she got revenge after being duped out of $6,000. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. All right, so hi, Social Catfish. My name is Debbie, and I'm 58 years old. I'm a retired auctioneer. I lost my husband uh, going on four years ago now. He got diagnosed with liver cancer. It was, it was really quick. It was like within 60 days, he was just gone. The house that we had bought was a, a foreclosure. And our aim was to remodel it perfectly the way we wanted it. And we did that. So one day I had my next door neighbor's teenage grandson come over. And um, I gave him a chair to take downstairs. And while he was down there, he lit my house on fire, but didn't bother telling me. I had a big fire and I was still grieving and I was just really a mess. One day this past spring, I woke up and it felt like the fog had had cleared a little bit, if you know what I mean. I went on Facebook, this one guy popped up and he's not really my type of guy, but I thought, well, let me see what he's all about. And he had the, the age old story of being on an oil rig, supposedly off the shore of New Orleans. I talked to him for months. Around the third or fourth month, he had an accident. His wallet was lost in the sea, and he claims that he couldn't eat the food that they served there. He had to buy it from a restaurant, which was very expensive. There was one restaurant on the, the rig, which didn't even sound believable to me, but I couldn't find anything on a search to tell me otherwise. About this time, I had just gone back to work. And uh, my husband and I always had our own businesses. So working for somebody else and then not working for, what, like 10 years and then going back to work, it was all kind of new to me. It was kind of a shock. So anyway, I went to work. It was at a convenience gas station type of store. Before I even got my first paycheck, he started asking me for money to eat. I can eat daily and and eat out for like 20 25 bucks but supposedly it costs him like 30 bucks a meal i even asked him i said what are you eating are you ordering steak and lobster or you know what why is it so expensive he says well because we're out on the sea and they're the only place i got sick of uh sending him money i had even pawned some of my jewelry he started saying well i'm due to come home soon don't worry about a thing you'll have everything you want he got the letter from the bank and he told me to go to the certain website which is supposedly his bank he told me to open an account so i'm expecting to have to prove who i am but there was none of that with just a password i was able to go into his supposed account. Uh, and by the way, his paycheck, I had misread it. I thought it was $1.5 million, which I thought was outrageous. It was $15 million, right? He had me move $500,000 from his account to my brand new account. A couple of weeks later, he says, okay, I'm all set to go tomorrow. I just have to pay the pilot. I'm like, okay, so what is it you expect me to do? I don't have any money. He says, well, go into the account that I gave you and put $72,000 in this other guy's account. He tells me the story that the bank isn't moving the money and that they've locked down my account, no longer protected from hackers. I have to ask for permission to withdraw any funds over a certain amount, which was a small amount, I think like a thousand or five thousand maybe. He says that the bank needs me to deposit a certain percentage, I forget what it was, like 2% or 3% of the amount I was trying to withdraw. I didn't have it, so I uh, 
I pawned some more of my jewelry. So I had like 1100 bucks. And so I take it to this Bitcoin machine. The closest one is like an hour away in Rochester. So they get it. And about a half hour later, I get an email that says they received it. The next day, I believe, he says, it's going to take more money than this. Well, can't you get a loan against your house? And I said, no, as a matter of fact, I can't because since I've been dealing with you, my credit rate has dropped down the high 500s pretty bad. I probably gave him around $5,000, which I know is just his money just gone. Doesn't make any sense. But he says that he snuck off the rig and then he left there a week ago, and he's supposedly now in New Mexico. Then there was this other guy that I had texted from Facebook dating, and we just kind of were like, hi, how you doing? You know, nothing real serious or sort of just pen pals, I guess. All of a sudden, when this crazy stuff with my make-believe selling my house was going on, this guy started talking to me more and more. and. He's kind of cute. The picture is anyway. I doubt he is. And he was supposedly wasn't very far from me. He was like 40 minutes away. And then he pops back up and says, I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I had to leave the country for a job. And I'm like, oh, man, not this shit again, right? I said, oh, okay, where are you? And he says, I'm off of the shore of Scotland. He's a welder on a rig. He stays there five months and he gets $50,000. So things started getting weird with him about two months ago. He said he had this friend that was teaching him how to make money off of Bitcoin. You know, I am kind of pressed. I'd like to get my jewelry out of hock. (laughs) Okay, I'll do it one time for $50. So if somebody sends $500, it's $50. They send $1,000, it's $100. So some money comes, and I think it was 1500 I said, shit, I don't even believe this just happened. This guy's sending me money. This is so weird. I concocted this story that um, I drove to the Bitcoin machine that was an hour away, and I was sitting in the car, which is two blocks away from where the machine is, and sorting my money out so I had it all separated and I wasn't looking around to see who was around me. I was just being foolish. And as soon as I got out of the car, it was jumped. This is the story I told him. Then I, I figured he wasn't going to send any more money because I had broken the trust. You know what I mean? But then he has somebody send money by, by Zelle. But it totaled to 1650 was the amount. I decided to contact you guys and just see what, see, see if there's anything that I can say or do to help somebody else maybe not get caught up in these situations, which I don't know. I'm like a magnet. I seem to attract these people. I really need some schooling on maybe a different way to do things. I don't know. I'm still far away from 5,000 or 6,000, however much I sent the first guy. But I feel like I'm regaining some of that and what I've taken from this guy. After receiving this video from Debbie, our search specialist Lenny got to work. She did a reverse image search on the two men's photos on our site, socialcatfish.com, and got results in minutes. If you're looking to verify your online lover, the first step would be to use the tools on our site. You can click the link in our bio and check them out. Now let's hear what Lenny has to say. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get back into it. We wanted to talk to you about your case today, and we looked at all kinds of stuff. We looked at all kinds of things, obviously knew coming in that these were scams. And um, sometimes just knowing why and how these things happen can help a lot of people who may be in scams make the decision to get out. And it also helps a lot of people to avoid these scams. First person I wanna talk about is John Erickson. John Erickson, we were able to find his real photos. The real man's name is Steve Slepsevic. He's a disaster planning and recovery specialist. He helps communities recover, he helps them plan and he's busy living a real life. So these photos are stolen. Really? 
you gave me a couple of IDs and it's plain to see that the same photo on his job ID is the same as his driver's license. That's not how the DMV works. We know they're fake with Mr. Slepsevic's pictures. I want to talk now about the second man in your story. His name is Conway Harry Thompson. We found a lot of dating profiles featuring the same face that you have. And then we started looking deeper and we found him all over the internet in connection with Turkish Prime Minister Yildirim. He's in news articles, he's behind the scenes, he's always standing behind. If he were like an average citizen and you thought that, it'd be almost like he's photobombing, he is a public figure. And we know that he is in Turkey. You did a lot of your own research and we actually we love that when people do that because nobody can take as good a care of you as you can. You sent an IP tracker device to the scammer. This tracker came back as Lagos, Nigeria. So Debbie, at that point, what, what were your thoughts? What were going through your mind when that's what the tracker came up with? He just denied it. Unfortunately, Debbie, if you send a scammer even $1, these scammers put you on a list. This list lets other scammers know that you're willing to send money. Remember that they already learned a lot from you the first time, and so they put that all together and put together other fake profiles to scam you. So in both of these profiles, these men with stolen faces, we suspect that they may be run by the same scammer or the same group of scammers. We know they work in networks. We know that they share information. We see this a lot with other victims too. You send money once and the scammers just keep coming in all directions. One of the things that was very interesting that might be new to a lot of people here is he sent you a banking website. The purpose of this website was to have you log in and see that this person had a bunch of money in his account. Sometimes a scammer will say, if you could just help me out right now, my money is frozen, but as you can see, I'm good for it. They're also right. trying to gain your trust by sharing their logging and information. So these types of websites, they look legitimate at a glance, but when you really start to break it down and dissect into the website, you can see a lot of errors that a legit company would never allow on its website. In this case, there's simple graphics, there's limited interaction, the social media buttons don't work, and a lot of the copy looks like it's not even proofread. So what you did, Debbie, and I was really impressed that you did this, is you went behind the scenes and you wanted to see who owns this website, who runs this website. And so we went to that site that you looked at and you found, you found that this website is hosted by a discount hosting agent called Namecheap. Any secure company in regard to finance would never use a Namecheap as their domain host. It's a very sensitive site, sensitive information. They have certain requirements for their servers. And the other big clue here is that this site is only 255 days old today. So in less than a year's time, this website is up and running and scamming people just like you. I want to talk about the money that you're holding right now, Debbie. What are your feelings about this money? My thoughts are, I don't really understand what he's after. The first guy, John Erickson, was definitely after whatever he could get out of me. At some point, someone sent you this money through Zelle and Venmo, if I remember right. I know that you would feel that there is justification in keeping some of this money. But Debbie, I'm sorry to say you have to turn this money over to the police. And this is why. In money laundering, criminals need someone legitimate. And that's you, Debbie. The legitimate person, that's you, carries all the risk. Because in money laundering, it goes from place to place to place to place. And if it goes through one legitimate source, that's you. Hey, Debbie, so what is the next step? Um, I guess I'm supposed to call the police. You need to report. Sometimes people don't report for various reasons. Sometimes they feel like they're just a little teeny tiny part of the puzzle. Sometimes they feel it's futile, like I've lost my money, I'm never getting it back or that it's embarrassing, or that I'm all alone. But here's the deal. If no one reports this, if no one talks about it, it's all for nothing. And these scams just keep on multiplying. 
So I'm encouraging you to report. For those of you that are watching, click on the pop-up and you'll be able to see our list for reporting and other helpful links that can help you if you're going through a scam. You guys did great work and you actually, you, I don't know, whatever that feeling was in my chest that there was like this glimmer of hope, even though I knew there wasn't, it's like it's done. So I can gladly walk away and I guess call the cops. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.